So I was very happy that I could buy uh, those two chainsaws from the same man. I lost the battery a little now, so I got a little out of it. But what I told is that I bought this nice one on auction. And um, after, uh, when I contacted the seller, he told me that he has another one. And uh, what do you mean? Uh, I couldn't believe it. Yes, I have another one, a raquette. And he sent me pictures. And it's uh, a Jonsred's XF. So we actually had two Jonsred's XF. And since I paid, I didn't pay the... Uh, I got this for a price which I thought was very good. Uh, on the auction, uh, for a moment it looks like I would get it for about $200. But... Um, uh, there was a couple of others who was interested and uh, the price uh, skyrocketed in the end. So I don't want to tell how much I gave for it. But um, I can tell that I gave less than $400 for it. And um, well, he didn't bother too much, the seller. He didn't uh, investigate what it is and how much value. He, he just uh, had it and he wanted to sell it. Uh, here in uh, in Sweden, he didn't want to sell it to uh, to Finland. He didn't uh, sue me, and he didn't want to send it to Canada because there was people there uh, contacting him and eager to uh, to get the saw chainsaw. But he didn't want to bother with uh, sending and all uh, kind of stuff uh, connected with uh, that to send it abroad. So, um, well, he told me he had one more. And I told that, uh, well, I spent a lot of money now, and I also gave him an offer because he presented some other chainsaws too. And I offered him some money for this because I knew this was uh, rare when I investigated it a little on uh, YouTube. Um, there was a man there tell that is a rare chainsaw. It's a home light uh, automatic 400 with a 65.5 cc. Today is, it is uh, 22nd of uh, December 2023 and I have arranged uh, something here for the home light 400 automatic. It's an XL, the XL serial. I have to drop it up because all the rubber for the anti-vibration is gone. Ay! Ay, I broke the handle. I twisted it. I, uh, I broke it straight off. This is very powerful chainsaw. Then I need to strap it even more. This is insane. So something is happening now. Yeah, it's still free. Wow. It's too much fuel in it.
Today it's going to be uh, another high value uh, chainsaw uh, to be tested. I uh, have uh, restored and worked with the uh, home light 400 automatic. And here it is. <coughs> I have uh, repaired um, the anti vibrations. You have one there, one there, one there, and one there. I use some uh, rubber from uh, a home light uh, 125 uh, VI uh, because I had a wreck uh, of that kind of chainsaw and I combined it with some uh, new rubber uh, which is meant for steel 025 and um, cut it in the perfect length and uh, uh, I repaired uh, the broken handle here and also there, it was broken here. I also take um, a, a, a cut apart and I adjusted it from uh, the 125 home light because this uh, circle here was uh, uh, totally gone. So I uh, made two screws here and uh, Yebe weld and grinded it down a little so it's almost uh, perfect uh, height. It's a little higher than the original. The distance from this and up to there is uh, approximately two millimeter too big or high. But it doesn't matter, it functions very good and the pier is uh, very good. So all this uh, handle is uh, quite uh, intricate and it's anti-vibration and I didn't see that on other uh, uh, home light uh, 400 automatic but this one has and it now it looks uh, feels uh, good and um, but there is not many uh, film or clips uh, presentation of this uh, chainsaw so I guess it's uh, quite real. Only Leon's uh, chainsaws have this on YouTube, but he has a fixed handle like a home light XL12. But um, I do have anti vibration setup, and that's uh, better than fixed. And I have uh, uh, rebuilt the carburetor and did the service. I changed the fuel line. And so the carburetor, it's uh, a Valbro SDC 26. It's not Tilotason. As I can, far as I can see. It's a little bit worn out on the top here. But it's a, a Valbro chainsaw, on, no, a carburetor on this chainsaw, stop switch, and I have no idea if it will be a success, maybe will, and the chain was old, so with a little bit, little bit uh, resistance there, but that, that's why I didn't um, tighten the chain. Uh, much so if it will run it will uh, uh, it will move up the, the little bit rusty resistance I feel exactly there but I made penetrating oil yesterday so stayed overnight with penetrating oil to uh, to make the parts on the chain move again I don't know how long time it's been staying and in which condition it has been stored. Could have been staying for uh, 20 years, easy. <laughs> and uh, the chainsaw is from uh, about 1970. It has 65.5 cc and uh, then it's about 50 years old. So. Uh, 
and there you have the pre-start. I don't know if it has, uh, I think that, yes, it has a decompression valve down there. That's in now, so it should not be so hard to pull. So I just push that in, I think that works. And some chainsaws uh, of the home light, they have, um, as I understand it, uh, decompression valve uh, activated when you put in pre-start. And also this should have that, uh, they should have a rod uh, going down there to the decompression valve, but uh, it's missing. And as I understand, this uh, is uh, Leon's chainsaw, he told that it's uh, very usual that this uh, rod is broken or uh, disappear. And it's automatic, as in the name. So you can see no um, overriding uh, oil here. See just a screw there. I have no idea if the oiling is working and if the chainsaw will work at all. But let's see. And I give it some oil. And I give it some fuel. And I'm going to give uh, fuel directly into the chamber, the Venturi chamber. Take a look if the fuel filter is on the right place. It is. Of course, it was. I remember it was bent a little, so it uh, the fuel line here was a little uh, curvy, so it bent back up. So I thought it died when I tested it when I broke the handle on the other video. So it didn't uh, get the fuel because the fuel line bent upwards. But now I think it's jammed down there, looks like that. So it's going from the, into the bottom of the fuel tank. <laughs> Let's uh, give it some uh, Aspen two-stroke fuel. And some uh, oil, it's a little bit uh, this handle here, <laughs> it's a little bit uh, uh, small space to uh, uh, give it oil. I think that will work. It's about uh, plus uh, a couple of degrees, I think, Celsius today. So the oil is not that uh, oil, right? Already filled up. Filled up. Hmm. So now there is no doubt that it has oil. Absolutely has. So um, the oil is not that uh, slow uh, ripping because it's not that cold. It have a tendency to get uh, uh, dripping slowly this uh, stucky bar oil when it's uh, minus 10 degrees or more. So I, I make the, this uh, rip off that's why I put it there for some minutes to drip off so I don't uh, drip that oil all over the place in the garage okay tighten this cup oil cup and then I go there I have a screwdriver and then try to adjust it. There is the that's the low screw there and the high screw there and the idle screw there. And here is the filter. Like this. And like this.
The chainsaw didn't have a spark when I um, got it. And I got the spark uh, running. Now it should have spark. Two times I need to sand uh, the points and uh, connections. And then finally it seems to have a good spark now. Investigate that. Thank God I've got the spark back. And uh, renovated the carburetor as I told. So I go get some gloves and then you see there will be some live in it. Yes, I just checked. It's about two degrees outside, so I was uh, correct there. So, the plan is to give it a couple of droplets with fuel to help it. So, I'm not used to this tensor, I have no much experience with it. That's why. I just give it, uh, I don't want to pull too much, so I give it a couple of droplets there. I think it wants that. Move the throttle a little to make sure the fuel is getting in there. Choke on. Let's see. The decompression valve is in. It reacts at once. Maybe it round a little now, but there was, was a reaction. First pull. Heavy chainsaw. I have to drop start it. It gives really back. Uh, I maybe gave it too much fuel. Cool. Uh, uh, it gave me a hard recoil. Okay, maybe I uh, took off the pre-start. Maybe that's why. And Leo's chainsaw, he tell you need you really need to have this steady when you start it because it's uh, heavy stuff. Ah, it absolutely don't want. Like it has too much fuel in it. Ah. Ah. Ah, maybe try a drop stock. See how that works.
is oiling. And now the chain moves freely. And I can tighten the chain a little. The automatic oiler is working. And it bugged down a little. But this is uh, promising. And I had to drop start it to make it go. Tighten the chain. Put on the filter. Oh, it looks decent. You start to get familiar with my cutting place here in town. So I had to drop start it to make it work. Let's see if it will restart.
bogging down. It's not totally perfect, but it's maybe perfect enough to call this very good success. some picture of this thing. Screw. 
in this place. But now I will say goodbye. Very excited about this because I guess it's a rare chainsaw. And uh, now I say bye bye. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want and put likes if you want. Appreciate that. Good luck with your chainsaws. Have a nice day.